Hello there, this is Robin Norgren. Welcome to Josie's Art School, and I am so glad that you are here. Today's art lesson is going to be painting in the style of uh, Georges Ruralt. And I'm gonna put some links down in my, um, uh, my description box so you can learn more about this amazing artist. And what I like about it is uh, we get to practice a little bit with complementary colors. We get to use a fun technique um, uh, called stained glass technique. We do a little por portraiture, but we also um, think about facial proportions. So let me give you a little history about George Walt. He was a fauve painter who used complementary colors to create dark and muted colors in his paintings. He also used black outlines to give a stained glass appearance to his work. He had a friend who designed stained glass windows and Rualt wanted to include this style in his work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by creating that style. So the easiest way for you to kind of get that stained glass look is probably the key uh, to really feeling some success with this project. And that is to create a stained glass effect. So what I'm going to do at first is I'm going to create, um, I guess you would call it like a house um, uh, kind of uh, uh, shape, but as you can see, it's more about just getting um, a shape in which to create um, the stained glass look. So with stained glass, what you want to do, I think the key, personally, when I observe stained glass, is about those straight lines. And so what you're doing is you're taking uh, a ruler or some sort of piece of paper, and you're creating these uh, these. Uh, elaborate, although I should say not too elaborate, which means that you don't want to have too many shapes uh, to um, have to um, fill with color because there's nothing like thinking, oh my gosh, this is such an amazing project. And then, you know, about 30 minutes into it, you've grown weary from all the different uh, <laughs> patterns that you have to paint in. So I like to go for about, I would say 10. And as you can see, as I get towards the bottom here, I'm all of a sudden going, okay, that's already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And so I'm going to cut myself some slack because I know that I'm going to put, um, a portrait somewhere within this shape. So the first thing I would like to do is I would like to color in um, the shapes that I've created. So I am using um, acrylic paint. Uh, you can use watercolor paint as well if you'd like. I'm just using a combination of, the bo of both of them because I like how acrylic paint and watercolor paint looks side by side. So this um, paint that I'm using. It's called Sage Green. And let me show you the other ones that I'm working with. I'm working with a King's Gold. So it's a combination of Apple Barrel and um, Craft Smart brand paints, which you can find usually in like your local um, Walmart or um, Michael's, even Joann's or just your local uh, franchise um, craft store. So as you can see, I let a little bit of the green stay in my um, in my brush because I like how the color comes through. And I am attempting to use some complementary colors. This is an Apple Barrel Bright Red. And as you can see, I'm kind of spreading them out because I do want to then come in and use my watercolor paint alongside that. Um, these colors and you'll start to see right away why I've made that decision. Now, you don't have to do that. You could create just all of it in crayon, uh, markers, uh, pencils, watercolor pencils, or even Sharpie. I think the key to getting that really nice stained glass effect, it really has to do with the colors sitting next to each other, you know, to, to have some real um, differences in the hues of the color but also I really do think that it all that it has to do with um, how um, tight the lines are around it so let me give you an example so I have used the yellow and I've used the green and then right here next to the yellow I'm going to use some some purple watercolor paint so can you see right away it really starts to lend itself to that stained glass look now I am painting pretty loosely. I, that is 
basically my style is to paint loosely. And then what I like to do is I tighten up all the areas by um, tracing around it with either a black crayon or um, a Sharpie or a black pen. All right, so look at this. Again, here is the green, but can you see that even with putting two greens together, because of the nature of watercolor paint versus acrylic paint, you still have a little bit of a difference. So, I mean, I would say, honestly, I probably wouldn't necessarily put them together, but I just wanted to show you um, the premise be behind why I'm using both at the same time. All right, so now let's try the same thing with this red, but this time I'm gonna go a, a shade lighter with the watercolor paint, so it's kind of a magenta color. And as you can see, that's just a nice color to be working with. So this artist is actually a new one for me. I um, create art lessons that I teach in classrooms as well as online, and I hadn't really studied this artist's work. So I was very interested in learning more, and I will, as I said before, add some more details to the description so you can you know, if you're interested in this artist, I'm always, I always love to, once I've been introduced to an artist, to go and see if I can find some works of theirs and also to see if it might even be displayed somewhere at a local um, art museum. Okay, so here is my brown watercolor paint, and I do love this brand of watercolor paint. It's Artist Loft, and what I like about it is that the colors are really incredibly vibrant. Okay, so here I'm going to put some green. And so the good thing about, um, well, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I am not one that um, uses a ton of paint when I paint. And so when I'm painting, my, my, um, the paint that I'm using, um, the areas where I paint, usually dry pretty quickly. If you're one that really likes to double load your brush, um, I would say you'll probably have to stop the video to let it dry before you go to the next step of this, um, this lesson. So just keep that in mind if you wanted to do them, you know, to complete this lesson from beginning to end, which takes about 20 minutes, just depending how quickly you're working. Um, you want to make sure not to put too much paint. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going back to my acrylic paint, but this time I'm adding a little bit of water in it. So again, giving me another um, gradation of that color that I'm using, because this is the same one as the one up here. And I have mentioned in my other videos, that's actually my favorite color right now, that sage green. All right, so I'm gonna add some blue. And then I think I'm gonna do, um, let's say a brown right here. So a lighter brown for my watercolors. All right, so I'm not gonna work with the edges as of yet. I want to now go into the style of painting that this artist really loves. So as mentioned, he um, was inspired by the work of his friend who worked in stained glass. And so what he did is he combined what it is that he liked to create with what his friend liked to create. So basically what that means is, what he liked to do is he liked to paint portraiture and he painted it over stained glass. So here's kind of a way I'm gonna do it. I'm using my black acrylic paint. And I'm drawing just the outline of the face right there. And then adding the neck and then going for a stylized nose and you can go with the eyes being opened or closed and then of course the hair
and you can go as detailed as you like maybe even after looking at his paintings be inspired to add a little more flair a hat clothing scarf I'm going to add the ears in and so there you have it right away you're seeing that rendition of the painting of the portraiture and then what if you'd like you would then go in and maybe add some details around your stained glass so I'm going to do that very subtly and see if I like it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to kind of leave it as is because I do like how the portrait came out. Again, this is the good thing about watching the video and then maybe going back and doing it again and going, okay, she did this. I think I'm going to do something different. Because I definitely want that stained glass look to really play into the features of the face. I think that's something that I haven't seen before and I like highlighting that. All right, so then from here, what you can do is you can leave this if you want to, or you can come back in now and maybe choose a different color to really highlight this outer edge here. So let's say, for example, if I wanted to, well, see, I'm gravitating to the green, <laughs> so that's not necessarily good. But um, let's say, for example, I wanted to use the, um, the tan. And then what I wanna do is maybe just use a, a wash of that tan, and then that way it's not too dark but it allows the colors in the middle with the stained glass to really pop. So I'm just kind of going around the edges. Again, adding a little more water if I need to water it down a bit. So there you have it. If you end up doing this lesson, please make sure and tag me over on Instagram. I'm under Robin underscore Norgren. All the details are in my description down below. Make sure and like and subscribe to my channel. I do videos at least twice a week. Sometimes I throw in a surprise short just for fun. And um, as always, I am grateful for anything you do to support me in the bio. I also have art kits, uh, art journaling kits, sewing kits, and dolls that you can create on your own. So once again, just want to thank you for stopping by and make sure and subscribe. All right, see you back here soon.